Darth Nihilus Origins, exploring the twisted, planet-eating Sith Lord. Darth Nihilus, aka Lord of Hunger, was one of the most terrifying Sith Lords in the history of the Star Wars franchise. While he is known as a frightening entity who would consume everyone in his path, he was initially just a regular human being who lost all his family and friends during the events of the Mandalorian Wars. All his grief and anger finally turned him to the dark side and he then resorted to draining the life force of other beings as well as entire planets to keep going. He would eventually become the Dark Lord of the Sith, and his character has also appeared in Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 video game. Today, we will explore the origins of this twisted Sith Lord and tell you all about Darth Nihilus. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Now, let's begin. Exploring the history and backstory of Darth Nihilus. While Darth Nihilus went on to become a feared Sith Lord, he was initially just a human being who witnessed the Mandalorian Wars. These wars were galaxy-wide fights between the Galactic Republic and the Mandalorian Neo-Crusaders, and Nihilus suffered huge losses during these wars. He lost his family and friends, and had nothing left to live for by the time the wars were on the verge of ending. During one of the war's final battles, he ended up on Malachor V around the year 3960 BB why, where a Jedi general named Mitra Surik had used the masked shadow generator superweapon to wipe out the planet. While nearly every single being on this planet died, Darth Nihilus somehow managed to survive this attack. He ended up being stuck there within the artificially generated mass shadows created by the weapon, and he soon realised that several opposing fleets were also trapped with him. He started to feel hopeless about his future, and was still quite numb from all the losses he had suffered during the war. All his pain eventually manifested into a feeling of extreme hunger and he unintentionally ended up feeding on another being's life force. Nihilus did not like what he had become, but he realised he only felt good when he fed on other beings' life forces. He initially tried to suppress this feeling, but his feeling of emptiness and hunger only intensified within him. He continued to feed on the life force of other survivors and he realised that his hunger kept increasing with every new victim. However, he also felt himself growing powerful and he eventually stopped fighting his dark side. Nihilus before long became a Sith Lord after Darth Treya found him and told him that his hunger came from the Force. Treya even offered to teach Nihilus to use his hunger to feed on entire planets and these events took place around 3956 BBY after the death of Darth Malak, the Darth Lord of the Sith. Darth Malak's death divided the Sith Empire into many factions, all trying to fight each other to gain more power. When Treya located the man who would eventually become Darth Nihilus, he was still figuring out how to use his hunger. Darth Treya suggested that he join the Treyas Academy on her planet in order to train himself and he accepted this offer and started learning about the ways of the Sith. He also learned how to use the Force's dark side and he eventually completed his training to become a Sith Lord. He soon started referring to himself as Darth Nihilus and formed a new friendship with Darth Sion. Nihilus and Sion joined hands with Treya to create an alliance known as the Sith Triumvirate. Exploring the story arcs featuring Darth Nihilus. Darth Nihilus's role in the Sith Triumvirate. While Darth Sion took the title of the Lord of Pain and Darth Trya labelled herself as the Lord of Betrayal, Darth Nihilus started referring to himself as the Lord of Hunger. His hunger for power was more significant than anything else and Darth Trya eventually started seeing this as a threat to her alliance as well as the Sith. However, she had promised to teach him to use his hunger to consume whole planets and she went ahead and she kept that promise. Nihilus soon started destroying entire planets to satiate his appetite and he eventually let his dark side take total control over him. He went around the galaxy to consume planets and become more powerful and his plan for the destruction of the Jedi Order started clashing with what Darth Treya had in mind. Treya wanted to destroy the Jedi over a period of time, while Nihilus and Sion were of the view that they should launch an attack right away. Eventually Nihilus and Sion cornered Trya at the core of the Trias Academy and Nihilus used his powers to force push her into the platform. Sion and Nihilus combined their powers together to drain her force energy and they eventually cut her ties with the force and exiled her. After Darth Trya's defeat, her followers were divided and they all abandoned the Academy to look for power elsewhere. Darth Sion and Darth Nihilus went ahead with their plans to destroy the Jedi and Sion killed any Jedi in his way while Nihilus travelled across the galaxy in his massive flagship, Ravager. Nihilus had gotten his hands on a huge number of ships in Malachor V and he travelled around the galaxy to discover the huge deposits of the Force and then consume it to satiate his hunger. His body was soon completely absorbed by the Force and all the dark energy finally started affecting his human body. 
Around this time, Nihilus and Sion got rid of the Jedi and also came together to reunite as Sith Lords. Nihilus also decided to get rid of his physical body and he removed his spirit from his actual body to put it in a suit of armour. He then used the Force to have a semblance of a structure by keeping his armour, robes and mask in place, but he had given up on his physical body. From this point on, Darth Nihilus gave himself up to the dark side and his only aim in life was to satisfy his hunger. He also created a holocron which contained several Sith secrets that he had learned over a period of time. He also rebuilt the Treyas Academy with Darth Sion and the two of them trained several assassins and murderers as well as Sith Lords. His followers spread chaos and death all over the universe and Nihilus taught them to sense their victims' presence and even use their energy to enhance their powers. Darth Nihilus's role in the destruction of the remaining Jedi Order Around 3952 BBY, all surviving Jedi were required to attend a huge gathering on the Mera Luka colony on Qatar, and this meeting was arranged by the Jedi Master Atrus. Atrus could sense a lurking dark energy, and she then used her senses to leak their location to this energy in an attempt to lure him out and destroy him. It turned out that this dark energy was actually Darth Nihilus, and he fell into Atrus's trap and decided to attack the surviving Jedi on Qatar. Nihilus ended up travelling to Qatar, and his voice was so powerful that the surviving Jedi could feel the force through his voice. Nihilus' dark energy was so powerful that he ended up destroying the entire planet of Qatar, as well as anything in its surrounding. In doing so, he killed most of the remaining Jedi Order, and Atrus later tried to rebuild the Order with whatever resources they had left. While Nihilus was walking on the destroyed planet of Qatar, he came across a survivor named Visas Mar, and he decided to take her with him. He used his powers to put her in a deep slumber, and Mar regained consciousness on his ship after many days. She demanded to know why Nihilus did not kill her, and he then shared his vision of a world where humans were disconnected from each other after being unable to sense the Force. He further told Mar that he strived to bring order into the universe, and Mar realised that the vision had taken away her powers that enabled her to see through the Force. She then agreed to train under Nihilus to become his shadow hand and even developed a force bond with him. This bond brought them together and they started having a direct impact on each other's strength to an extent where they could either strengthen or weaken each other. Darth Nihilus's role in the Onderon Civil War Darth Nihilus joined hands with General Vaklu, who was leading a separatist movement at the time. Vaklu was the commander-in-chief of Onderon's armed forces, and he wanted the planet to leave the Galactic Republic. Nihilus allied with him so that he could take over Onderon and establish it as the Sith's working base. Nihilus even set up his base of operations on Onderon's moon, Dexon, and would operate from the tomb of an ancient Sith Lord, Freedon Nad. This tomb was located on Dexon, and Nihilus wanted to feed on the tomb dark energy known as the Force Nexus. His followers were also preparing to perform a ritual to help the Sith win the Onderon's royalist favour in the Civil War, while Atrus planned to take him down. On a different side of the universe, Atrus arranged for Mitra Surik to return from her exile and she later made sure that the news of Surik's return would reach Darth Sion. Meanwhile, Darth Treya also returned from exile and she started going by her real name, Kreia. Kreia joined hands with Surik and even helped her with her training before finally sending her on a journey to recruit Jedi Masters and convince them to fight the Sith. Darth Nihilus could sense an imbalance in the Force when Kreia returned and he sent Mar to locate Surik and capture her. Nihilus wanted to feed on her but Surik easily defeated Mar and even convinced her to work against the Sith Lords. Mar betrayed Nihilus and joined hands with Surik while a clueless Nihilus continued to travel all over the galaxy and feed on more planets. When Nihilus' followers were finally preparing to carry out a ritual on Onderon's moon, Surik sent a group of people to attack them. She had joined hands with Mandalore the Preserver to kill this group of people, but Nihilus' followers managed to complete their ritual before Surik's forces killed her. In the meantime, Surik decided to visit Queen Talia of Onderon while Darth Nihilus was planning to attack the royal palace. Surik managed to convince the royals to maintain their current stance, and General Vaklu's ambitions about the planet leaving the Galactic Republic came to an end when the officials executed him. After realising there was no scope for victory, Darth Nihilus abandoned his plans to turn Onderon into his base for the Sith. Darth Nihilus' role in the Battle of Telus IV After giving up on Onderon, Darth Nihilus learned about a Jedi Academy on Telus IV and he decided he would attack the place. Colonel Tobin had approached him with this information and we learned that Kreia had sent him to lure Nihilus into coming to Telus IV. Nihilus travelled to Telus IV with his army of followers and by that time he had turned every single one of his followers into a mindless servant who only did his bidding. Upon reaching Telus IV, the Republic Navy, Mandalorians and Surik prepared to attack. Nihilus arrived on the 
planet and realised that the Jedi on this planet were not really force sensitive and he no longer wanted to attack them. Nevertheless, he had eyes on Telos 4 and wanted to consume that planet. The Mandalorians cornered the ship while the Republic Navy helped Surik and Mar sneak into Nihilus's warship. Nihilus finally confronted Surik Mar and the Mandalorian's leader, aka Mandalore. Nihilus initially targeted Surik and tried to drain her life force, but Surik's training helped her to stand up to him, and the two briefly fought each other until Nihilus stunned her. Mar then stepped in to distract Nihilus by putting on a performance and asking him to take her life instead, while Surik returned to her senses. Once Surik was back to normal, Mar broke off her force bond with Nihilus, thereby weakening his link to the force energy. Mar's betrayal weakened Nihilus to a great extent, and he was finally vulnerable enough to be killed. Mar, Surik, and Mandalore killed him, and Mar then lifted his mask to get a good look at his face. She discovered that his body had erupted into a cloud of dark energies that had been released into the galaxy, and they left his body behind and took their leave. After some time, the proton bombs around Nihilus's ship finally exploded and destroyed the surviving Sith. While Nihilus had been killed, his spirit survived the attack and was then buried on the Sith's home planet, Korriban. His spirit was in touch with the planet's dark energy and he became a force ghost who could sometimes interact with the living. What was Darth Nihilus like? Darth Nihilus was quite aggressive and violent in nature, and he hardly cared about the Sith or their teachings. Other Sith Lords also feared his presence, and they were sure that he would not shy away from even consuming them one day. Nihilus only had one aim in life, and he always wanted to reach greater heights of power. He was focused on feeding on souls to distract himself from his grief, and saw death as the only purpose of his life. After succumbing to the dark side, Nihilus became a mysterious entity who hid behind a mask and armour. It was even believed that his mask hid nothing but darkness, and all his victims felt a huge sense of dread whenever they faced him. Nihilus was quite a dominant personality, but he was also very cautious in his actions at the same time. He also had some human feelings after eventually turning into a Sith Lord, and he also displayed these feelings when he bonded with Mar, and he eventually realised that she had betrayed him. Darth Nihilus was usually seen wearing black robes that covered his entire body. After his organic body had decayed, Nihilus's spirit was stored within his suit of armour, and he wore a white mask over his face at all times. His mask had red stripes over the eye holes, and was also outlined with fine brown embossed details that split the mask into two halves. How incredibly powerful was Darth Nihilus? Darth Nihilus was quite a violent character who'd reached a point where his hunger became his driving force, and he often fed on anyone in his way just to satiate his hunger. He was quite powerful and he had also learned many things from Sith teachings that only made him stronger. He could defeat most of his opponents in one-on-one -on -one combat and was drawn to force-sensitive creatures around the galaxy. He would even travel across the universe to locate these creatures, and he had destroyed numerous planets on his mission to eliminate anything associated with the Force. He eventually became a threat to all life forms across the galaxy as his hunger only kept growing with time. Nihilus could even hurt his victims just by speaking aloud, and he had the ability to feed on the Force that resided within his victims. He even used a dark variant of the Force to betray Darth Treya and get rid of her presence in the Sith Order. He could also summon the powers of the Force to lift starships, and he was also skilled in Sith alchemy. He also drew strength from a dark variant of the Force healing known as Dark Healing, which enabled him to use the Force light Lightning, force Resistance, Force Scream, and Force Whirlwind, among other powers. He could also increase the strength of his powers if he wished, and he could even reach the Force from far away distances. When he was stuck on Malachor 5, he managed to survive a deadly attack by containing his inner consciousness in his armour, which only shows the extent of his powers. Darth Nihilus typically used a lightsaber that he had built on his own, and he also had a starship known as the Ravager. Legacy of Darth Nihilus in the Star Wars franchise Darth Nihilus left quite a legacy in the Star Wars franchise, and he had also influenced numerous storylines and character development arcs from across the Star Wars extended universe. In the aftermath of his death, Mitra Surik travelled to Malachor V and she also killed Darth Sion in an attempt to end the Sith Empire forever. However, the Sith continued to live on and clashed with the Jedi during the Great Galactic War and the Cold War. In this period, several galactic citizens were seen wearing replicas of Nihilus's mask and outfit. His holocron also ended up falling into the hands of a criminal called Diego Hixan, who stored it on Tatooine. A Sith named Vavarone Zare wanted this holocron for the Sith, and she even sent a smuggler to steal it for her. However, this thief secretly told everything to a Jedi Knight named Nariel Pridence, and all of these events finally led to a face-off between both parties. Diego Hixan, as well as Zare, both ended up dying during the clash, and Pridence then left the holocron at its original place in an attempt to keep it away from the Empire. Before the Galactic Empire was formed, 
formed in the year 19 BBY, Jedi Master Bodo Bass had heard three rumoured versions of Darth Nihilus's fate, and he had recorded this information in his holocron for future generations. When the Empire came into power, three different groups of people, including spacers, Sith cultists, and a band of pirates, tried to locate Nihilus's mask. They travelled to Volok, and they learned that the mask was stored on a spacecraft called the Nashuaga. Finally, the Spacers managed to get rid of the pirates and Sith cultists and they even got their hands on the mask. Nihilus's holocron was later discovered by Darth Krayt, who was the founder of the One Sith Order. Darth Krayt wanted Nihilus's advice on some matters, but Nihilus only answered him in Sith Lord's language. Eventually, Darth Krayt's companions decided that he was not worthy of being a Sith, and they also didn't bother translating Nihilus's message to help him. Darth Nihilus was a legendary character who was sought even after his death, and his story arc also had quite an impact on the fans. He remains to be a popular character despite only appearing in one video game, and he has undoubtedly left behind quite a legacy. Conclusion Darth Nihilus had quite a traumatic past, and he went on to become quite a terrifying entity who would consume anything and everything in his path. He had quite an extensive story arc across the extended Star Wars universe, and he left behind quite a legacy among the Sith Lords. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't done so already. Have a good one and stay safe. Thanks everyone.